All right, hello everyone. Um, thanks very much, first of all, to MSF for, for having me. Um, I'm Ben, I'm a medical doctor from Tasmania uh, in Australia, and I'll be describing uh, the outcomes from the Integrated Mental Health Program in Demise Refugee Camp, Iraq. So first of all, so um, Demise Camp, as you can see, is situated in the north of Iraq in the Kurdish region. And MSF has been present there uh, has been present there since 2012. And first, the question: So, why integrate mental health into primary health care? So, it serves to increase the detection of mental health cases, uh, makes treatment more readily accessible, and it helps to reduce stigma um, that mental health patients might face. And so, the integration strategy: So, cases are detected from the primary health care clinic. Uh, maternity and other services staff, so psychologists and counsellors um, provide psychological first aid, counselling when appropriate and brief psychotherapy for common mental health disorders. Uh, staff are present six days a week at the primary health care clinic. Uh, the medical team is also trained in psychological first aid, mental health screening, referring and connecting with mental health services and a referral network has been set up with the Directorate of Health Hospitals. There's also a community outreach strategy um, with active case finding of severe mental health disorders. Um, community health workers help to carry out uh, mental health promotion. There's group sessions for specific groups such as children with behavioural uh, disorders or pregnant females. And referrals are made by other NGOs, uh, the community outreach team, uh, the patients themselves and also their families. So the aim of this research was to uh, present the evolution of three functionality assessment scores that were used. So first we have the self-reporting questionnaire, um, the SIQ20, and that's completed or filled by the patient themselves. Uh, there's a series of 20 yes-no questions uh, with basically the higher the score, the poorer the result. Um, there's also the global assessment of functioning, so GAF and the children's global assessment scale, CJAS. Um, and both of these are consultant uh, uh, field and completed and it's a scale from 0 to 100 with 100 depicting the highest level of functioning. Uh, we also want to determine the, uh, the predictive factors which might um, uh, which, uh, look at the evolution of these three functionality assessments. So it's a retrospective analysis of program data which was collected from the start of January to the end of June 2015. So patients who entered the program um, were scheduled visits every seven to 15 days at the mental health clinic. Uh, patients greater than or older than 15 years would complete an SRQ20 and the consultant would complete a GAF. Um, and patients under the uh, age of 15, uh, the consultant would complete a CJAS. And the inclusion into this uh, research was at least two mental health clinic visits. We used Starter 13 to analyse the data and we looked at the evolution of median assessment scores, including uh, box plotting um, according to the visit number. And we used a multi-level uh, mixed effects linear regression model to explore the predictive factors um, that we collected. And importantly, uh, this retrospective study met the criteria um, of the MSF Ethics Review Board for exemption from ethics review. So we had 2,753 uh, patients in the program who visited the mental health clinic. This amounted to 11,165 consultations. Interestingly, we had almost 45% uh, under the age of 15, uh, it was 6.9% under the age of five. Uh, the median treatment length, uh, which was defined as uh, the period between the first to the last mental health clinic visit was 74 days. Um, and 99.7% of the patients were um, all stated to be of Syrian nationality. And so if you look at the diagnoses, um, so we use the ICD-10 as our um, diagnostic classification. We see that anxiety was the most frequent diagnosis given at uh, more than a third. And child behaviour disorder was second, which is a reflection of the high proportion of children who are in the program. And psychosis, we saw a frequency of 4.1%. This is probably the take-home slide of the presentation. And what it does, it looks at the, the median assessment scores of the first and it compares it to the last for all three um, measurements. So 
We see the most marked change with the SRQ20, so we see a six-point change from 10 to 4. So once again, the, the higher the number, the poorer the result. Um, and we also see changes in both the upper and lower quartiles. We see less of a change in both the GAF and the CJAS, so a one and a two-point change, respectively. Now, if we look at the median scores according to the visit number, um, with the SRQ20, we can see a gradual decline in the median um, score up until visit number seven, where we see it plateau off. Um, and we also see, in line with the median decline, we see a drop in the lower quartile, which is the upper part of the box. And on the right, we see, or well, this is a table looking at the frequencies um, per visit number. Uh, with the GAF, we see a plateauing at visit number three. Um, and this actually pattern, this, be, this has been uh, shown before in a, a research done by um, Pierre Bastin and his team in 2011, which elicited a very similar pattern with the evolution of GAF. Um, and the same with CJAS with the median, um, but we do actually see a continued improvement with the lower quartile um, with the CJAS and the dots which uh, represent the extreme values. If you look at the top predictors uh, of evolution, so with regards to the for patients greater than the age of uh, 15, we see older age, poor initial assessment scores, psychosis when compared with depression, uh, and individual therapy were associated with poor evolution of SRQ20 and GAF scores. Uh, and with the CJAS scores, we see that, uh, once again, poor initial assessment scores, autism, mental retardation, and psychosis, uh, when compared with child behavioural disorder, um, were associated with poor evolution. And so this slide just looks at the three tables and includes the adjusted coefficient. So all variables were... Um, adjusted according to statistically relevant uh, variables. And what we see is that in all three tables, uh, psychosis um, as well as the initial severity or the initial score feature. When we look at the limitations, um, so these, I'll just focus on the, the limitations specific to this research. So functionality assessments need to be contextually validated um, as monitoring tools. There's not much uh, research which looks into validating uh, the global assessment of functioning or the children's global assessment um, scale uh, in this context or similar context. Um, however, with the SRQ20, which was actually initially designed as a screening tool uh, by the WHO, uh, there's several papers, including one in the post-conflict setting of Rwanda, which show that it can be appropriate for monitoring um, due to the fact that it shows longitudinal factorial invariants, um, which means that we basically there's a, a not a minimal reappraisal um, by patients when they complete uh, these questionnaires uh, according to time. There was a lack of uniformity regarding when and how many times uh, the assessments were completed. Uh, limited information collected about reasons for ending uh, therapy. Um, so unfortunately for all three avenues, uh, more than 50% of patients, we didn't have information as to why, they, uh, why it was the end of their therapy. Lack of important uh, predictive factors in the model. So we didn't uh, unfortunately include uh, important socioeconomic factors in the model, which would have been interesting to explore as well. Uh, there's a, a need for improved collection of precipitating factors um, and Comorbidities and multiple diagnoses were also not considered. To summarise, basically, um, we've seen three, uh, we've seen positive evolutions of all three functionality assessment scores that we used, with the most marked being the self-reporting questionnaire 20, which showed a six-point change. Uh, and this, this is the question. So could this be a portrayal of positive efficacy of the integrated mental health Program. Now, obviously, we can't directly state causation uh, with the mental health uh, intervention, but nevertheless, this is uh, encouraging uh, to see. Um, secondly, so severe cases um, and psychosis uh, were associated with poor evolution of all three assessments. This has been a finding, or this is a finding that was also found with uh, Pierre Bastin and his team in Lebanon in 2011. And so that basically raises the question, how can we better adjust um, or adapt our uh, intervention to better serve or cater for patients with psychosis 
um, or patients with severe mental health disorders, independent of the diagnoses. Um, and finally, um, analysis. So analyses uh, like this can also help to uh, to serve or to strengthen uh, mental health monitoring systems as well. So thanks for everyone for, for listening. Also thanks to uh, the mental health team in Demise and to all the all the people in Demise and yeah, thanks very much. <laughs>